So this is the part of the show where I discuss what I believe is important for individual investors to consider before you make your investment decisions over the next few weeks. As I always do, here are my three points for this show. As you can uh, see, Fed speak and economic data always on my list. Can't help but to you know, look at what the Federal Reserve is saying, what the Fed governors say in between their meetings. They really move markets to the upside and to the downside, unfortunately. And they base what they say on the economic data, at least so we hope, whether it's jobs numbers or whether it's CPI or, or inflation, whether it's core inflation, when you strip out volatile energy and food prices, whatever they're looking at, it is uh, important for them before they make their uh, interest rate policy decision. I think you also want to look at quarterly earnings. I touched on that in the segment prior to this. We're in the, I guess, kind of maybe halfway through, maybe two thirds of the way through quarterly earnings. We're getting a lot more quarterly earnings over the next few weeks. What are companies saying? As I mentioned, 80% are beating expectations in the US. We're just starting to get quarterly earnings here in Canada. Rogers, as an example, had fantastic earnings, uh, I believe about a week or so ago. And lastly, never go wrong taking a profit. What does that mean? Well, I think sometimes taking a profit taking some money off the table is a good idea. So we'll touch on that and why you should be considering that before you make your investment decisions. So let's move forward with our first point, Fed speak and economic data. As mentioned, the Federal Reserve will make an announcement at 2 p.m. this afternoon, and it is highly likely that they're gonna raise a quarter basis point, so another 25 basis points. We have a chart here of the Federal Reserve interest rate hikes, all the nine hikes that we've seen over the past, I guess, year or so. You can probably add another column here pretty soon. That will be the 10th one, and it'll be 25 basis points hike. Uh, when you look at, we'll go to the next chart. We've seen this chart before, comparing the core inflation rate uh, in, uh, in the United States, the overall inflation rate of about 5%, core inflation, 5.6%, so a little bit higher even if you were to strip out the volatile energy and food prices. Interesting enough, when the Fed raises a quarter point, their interest rates are gonna be five, five and a quarter. We know overall inflation is now five. So now the bank rate, central bank rate is now going to be higher than the inflation rate, which to me signals that we could see a pause. Not only could we see a pause, but obviously the banking turmoil in the US is really putting pressure on the Fed. What is the Federal Reserve going to say? How are they going to react? What indications or what hints are they going to give to us? As you know, we parse through everything that uh, every word that the Fed is going to say. He'll have his um, Jerome Powell, the head of the Federal Reserve, will have his press conference in and around 2.30 p.m. And um, what are they going to tell us that is different than the last meeting? Keep in mind, we have a jobs number in the U.S. and Canada. Coming out this Friday, we have uh, inflation data coming out next week, a week today, actually. So we'll see what the Fed says. They may say pause. They may raise an inch, uh, 25 basis points and then say or hint that they may pause. I think that's the likelier scenario. So as an investor, I think the 2 o'clock meeting, the 2 o'clock announcement, the 2.30 press conference is very important for individual investors to consider before you make your investment decisions. Second point I wanted to discuss, the quarterly earnings. And this quarterly earnings season, I think, has been fantastic. Yes, the bar has been set extremely low coming into this quarterly earnings season. Many uh, investors expecting these businesses, businesses in the U.S. and Canada, to tell us that things are continuing to slow. In my opinion, we've had a handful of really, really good earnings, and we've had many other earnings reports that were pretty good. Wanted to highlight a few earnings that I thought were, were pretty good. One of them was Microsoft. And we have a chart on Microsoft and you can see how much Microsoft has actually gone up on the far right of the, of the chart. This stock, oh, I would say a month ago or so, was in the mid 200s, 250, 270. Now well over 300. It's had a tremendous run talks a lot about Microsoft spoke on the call or on their uh, um, press conference or their call with uh, with uh, journalists. They said that 
They're seeing a lot of gains in the artificial intelligence area. Their Azure or their cloud business, even though business is slowing down, still pretty good. LinkedIn from social media, you have Xbox for gaming. They're pretty much every hot area of the market that you want to be in, not to mention their teams and their software, Windows, et cetera. So Microsoft is in a sweet spot and they continue to outperform quarter after quarter. Another name that did really, really well, a name that probably was hit the hardest over the past year, and that is Facebook or what we now call Meta, parent company of Facebook. As you can see here, if you bought Meta somewhere around November of last year, what a ride you would have been on. Again, Meta, Microsoft, obviously, if you're going to take a look at these companies and consider owning them for your portfolio, you have to make sure that the risk tolerance or you have the risk tolerance or correct risk tolerance to buy an investment like this because they can be quite volatile. But I just wanted to highlight Meta, another fantastic earnings report. Two to three billion people use Meta's apps or on Meta apps every day, which is a huge thing, very powerful. Their reels, their stories, uh, just really catching fire. Um, and they're in competition with TikTok. Obviously, with the name now Meta, they're still putting a lot of money towards the metaverse and what that brings in the future. And we had uh, Lauren Sugarman last show talk out to all of us about the metaverse. So hopefully those that tuned in know a lot about the metaverse. So keeping, I guess, an eye on names like these, quarterly earnings like these is very important. Lastly, I have a chart on Caterpillar. Again, beat on the top line, beat on the bottom line. But as you can see here, Caterpillar, which is a company that sells heavy machinery globally, a global company versus United Rentals, which is rents, heavy machinery, but mostly in North America. Caterpillar didn't do so well after they reported earnings, even though earnings were good. So maybe Caterpillar is a name trading, I think somewhere around 12 times earnings, so fairly cheap. Maybe Caterpillar is a name that individual investors want to take a look at. So keeping an eye on quarterly earnings and this quarterly earnings season is really important before you make your investment decisions. I think I have one more here, Bank of America, another opportunity to pick up uh, one of the largest banks in the United States and the world. Again, good earnings, solid earnings. They actually set aside less money for bad debts than they did the quarter before, even though things continue to slow down. Yet the stock, even though you can see here on the, on the far right, kind of blipped up, it has pulled back down below $30 a share again. And may I remind you, this stock used to be almost uh, or in and around a $50 stock once upon a time. So down quite a bit from its previous highs. So let's go to the third point that I wanted to discuss, which is before you make your investment decisions, perhaps you should consider taking some money off the table. You never can go wrong taking profit. And I think when I look at individual investors' portfolios, what I tend to look at is why would I take a profit? Well, I think I would take a profit, either all or sell the whole investment or take partial profit if an investment was starting to get pricey. Or perhaps I was starting to hear some negative sentiment or negative commentary coming from the company, coming from its CEO. Or maybe it's just a matter of taking some profit because there's another opportunity somewhere else and to generate some cash in a portfolio. So there are many reasons why someone could take a profit or take profit off the table. And whether you take the whole, sell the whole investment or partial, I always, if I can, like to trim as a stock moves higher. So I have a couple of stocks here, for example. One is Broadcom, uh, a chip maker in the US. You can see how well this stock is done. I think Broadcom can actually go even higher, but yet I've been trimming it as the stock moves higher. Because if we are wrong and that stock were to pull back, at least we could say we took a lot of profit when things were good. If the stock keeps running higher, well, we just keep trimming more and more profits, taking more profits off the table. So a very good strategy, a strategy that is almost a win-win kind of situation. The other chart I have in this spot is, again, Meta. Meta is another name I started to take some profits on because I believe the stock has run out from $80, $90 to well over 200 even though investors or, or analysts think that a stock could go over $300, I continue to trim and take some profit off the table because I think it's prudent. What happens if Meta should stumble? The Metaverse should stumble and be delayed. 
would Meta or Facebook pull back maybe under 200 again? So if I can take some profit at 240, I think that's a very good strategy. So before individual investors make your investment decisions over the next few weeks, if you're sitting on a bunch of winners like a Meta, like a Broadcom, or perhaps some other stock, maybe it's a good idea to start trimming some of those profits, generate some cash, either reallocate that cash somewhere else, or let it sit in cash for a little while, making four, four and a half percent until you come up with another investment idea. Because I think when you trim profits, you can never go wrong.